We're at the Quail Hill Farm in Amagansett, New York today, focusing on garlic with our seed to plate series. The garlic season is upon us. We've just received that cool fall weather that we've been waiting for. Bogater is the seed that we're planting today. Scott's been saving it over the last three years, saving over half of his harvest of the garlic cloves, drying them, and then on the crisp, clear fall day, preparing the seed for another season's beginning. The Bogater variety is a large clove, which is what the farmer wants in order to winter over and build into a head of garlic that will provide again for next year. Layton came through with uh, an implement that loosened the soil to about eight to 10 inches. And then it was followed by um, the implement that I came through with, which is a transplanter. Throughout the season, we use a transplanter to transplant trays of seedlings that we've had uh, in the greenhouse. And we use them, we use a transplanter on longer beds um, that would otherwise take a very, very long time to do by hand. So we just use this implement to come through uh, and create dibbles in this block that we'll be placing the garlic in. The implements behind me are used in a farm setting. At home, you would use a pitchfork to turn the soil, preparing it with compost and lime, and then loosening the soil up, raking it, and then we would suggest that you go in with a string uh, attached to two sticks and follow that line every four inches with a stick or anything that you could put a three inch or a four inch hole into the soil, followed by the seed at uh, twice the depth of the seed, and then cover and mulch with leaf mulch afterwards. It's pretty obvious if you look at the clove which end will sprout and which end is the root. So you'll be able to see a little bit of root on there. And if you plant it upside down, it actually will, will in the spring, it will curve around like this and the sprout will come up, but the bulb won't get to a full size. So uh, garlic is really the most forgiving of crops. However, you want the larger size bulbs uh, if you can get it, and so you want to plant it right side up. So there's only one mistake you can make, planting it upside down. That's what you don't want to do. Some of the cloves, when you're breaking them, when you're doing the shucking and you're breaking them apart, some of the cloves will lose their, their paper wrapper, and that's fine. You can still plant it, but leave it on if, if you can. And larger is better. Larger is so. better. The larger, it, it does correspond. The larger cloves you plant, the larger bulbs you will get. It's better if you have two people working together and you alternate doing the middle. Mm -hmm. And if the dibble, if it isn't going deep enough, the dibble, then you really got to press it down. The other thing we I'm do telling everybody to press deep this year because yeah. for two years in a row they've heaped up. That's we, don't, we don't want that to happen. The garlic bed today is 500 feet long. There are three rows. The Quail Hill crew will be planting four inches per clove, spread at 12 inches, and they anticipate getting 4,500 cloves in each bed. This garlic seed represents four or five years of seed saving, enough to the point where Scott Chasky at Quail Hill Farm doesn't have to source outside garlic for his main production any longer. He now just buys other varieties in order to test them for his future garlic seeding. We've reached the middle of June, and we're back at Quail Hill Farm with Scott Chasky. At this time, there's a scape harvest going on, and we're interested to know 
why we're harvesting the scape, and why the plant is changing. What's going on? Okay, so the garlic was planted around Halloween. It's been in the ground, uh, whatever that is, eight months or so. The beginning of June, this type of garlic, hard neck garlic, uh, will produce a scape, which is called a flower stalk. It's technically not a flower, but that's the name of it. And if you do not cut the scape, you get about really two weeks to, of a window. If you do not cut the scape, there's something called the law of one-third, and you will lose one-third the size of the bulb because the energy is going into the scape. So um, this is kind of a bonus because you get um, two things to eat. You get the bulb eventually when you harvest it, but before that, you cut the scape, and you can use the scape as, as green garlic or sort of garlic scallions or whatever. If you do not cut it, however, you'll just get um, less of a, uh, you'll get a lesser size of the bulb itself and uh, no scapes, and you won't be able to eat them because eventually they will harden up. What's great about garlic when you're cooking it slowly is it loses the, the sharp bite that you get on the tip of your palate back to the middle of your palate and kind of mellows it out and makes it a, a very mild and sweet flavor rather than a sort of a harsh flavor. Um, so what we have here is some blended oil. We have some fresh rosemary, some scotch bonnet peppers, bay leaves, um, and you know, with the garlic, what you want to do is just take some of these nubs off and put them right into the oil. Uh, some people that doesn't bother them, but you know, I'm looking for, we are looking for a clean flavor, a clean look. There's the famous line in Goodfellas that if you slice the garlic thin enough, it disintegrates in the oil and gives you nothing but flavor. There's actually a lot of truth to that. Putting garlic in oil, and we're putting some seasonings in there like bay leaf, here's our pepper, and the rosemary. And we're going to poach it. We are not going to boil it. Poaching is about uh, getting your oil to about 180 degrees, like a simmer. Boiling would be more of 212. Um, when working with garlic, it's best always not to rush. Take your time, any type of garlic or onion. If you're looking to exude the flavor and not get any color, but just nice blonde flavor, blonde color, mild flavor. You wanna put it in the oil, put it on the fire, bring it up to a mild boil, and then turn it to a simmer, and just keep an eye on it. When your garlic is poached, and I have it here, it's been poaching about 15 minutes to 20 minutes on a nice slow poach. As you can see, we have our beautiful garlic confit here. Our other ingredients have poached with the garlic, our rosemary, our chili, our rosemary, our chili, and our bay leaf. So the garlic now has several flavors going on with one central flavor being the garlic, the mild garlic itself. One thing that the chili adds is a nice pungent um, complementary essence. So when you put the garlic on the bread with a little bit of the chili, you may think it's a little spicy, but actually when you have it on the bread, it's very nice. It's a very mild flavor with a little bit of spice at the end. And this is a great little thing that you could serve guests at your home. And again, you know, this is the type of dish that is friendly for any, anybody's dining habits, whether you're a vegan, a carnivore, a pescator. And as you can see also, you take your fork and you can just mush it right on the bread.